Falling off a bridge has never been more fun. Hello there, I'm Squawker, and welcome to my review of Far Cry. Okay, same rules as last time. The game can score up to 100 points. There are five categories worth 20 points each. They are graphics, gameplay, sound, story, and replayability. So sit back, relax, whatever, open, have beer, just enjoy or not enjoy, depends. <laughs> The graphics are quite good. They definitely show their age as this was a 2004 game, but this was the pioneering game for the Crytek engine which went on to run games such as Crisis. The general quality is good overall, the render distance is huge yet realistic, but the water doesn't look so great, it looks very out of place and doesn't blend well with the terrain all too well. And some of the indoor levels do look quite bland with their grey corridors and lack of decoration and props. As for graphical glitches, there are none. There are no popping textures and everything renders in very quickly. As for character models, they don't look too bad. You can easily tell this is an old game for, by looking at them. And they do move around rather awkwardly and stiffly, especially in the cutscenes. It kind of makes it hard for characters to emote. It's like watching a conversation in The Sims 1. However, one thing the character designers did do well, and spoiler alert, is the trigens. Their jaggedness and painted on facial features make them look terrifying. They look very scary, especially in levels with low lighting, and uh, the way they walk, it's just creepy. This game is notorious for its difficulty, but that's what makes this game unique. The lower difficulties are very hard, and you will be retrying the same sequence multiple times on several occasions, but it does pay off with a greater sense of accomplishment when you clear a room out, and it really does get the adrenaline pumping, which really gets you engaged in the game. You're not bored, you're in there shooting shit up because you wanna. But I will say that it is kind of annoying that the game does leave out a few details when teaching you new stuff, such as some of your weapons having secondary firing modes like grenade launchers. And sadly, there isn't really much gameplay variation, it is just a lot of shooting, the stealth is pretty broken, and the vehicle sections, yeah there are vehicle sections, but the vehicles handle terribly. The controls are relatively smooth though, and they are responsive at the same time, so no complaints arise from the controls apart from aforementioned vehicles. But the big issue with the gameplay is the AI, it's not very good, and it does kind of go wrong on multiple occasions. Enemies will sometimes blow themselves up with RPGs or charge right into you while holding one. Also, their combat mechanics are not brilliant, especially when in open terrain, they will just sidestep everywhere, and their aim isn't brilliant. Um, what really takes the terrible AI kick, though, is your companion, who you must escort in later levels of the game. God, she's dumb! She charges into battle at random and gets killed, or she will refuse to help you at all when you're getting your ass kicked, or she will just start randomly twitching. I must add as well that I have also experienced a total AI failure in this game when my companion literally learned to fly and I had to restart a whole sequence again to cure her. I must point out however that this game is not compatible with Windows 8.1, technically. It does run very well if you get a patch on it which doesn't take more than 5 minutes to install, however you will have the occasional crash. They're not one-offs, but they're not at the level where it's going to break the deal. A bit of a mixed bag here. There are good bits and bad bits, so let's tackle the sound one part at a time. The music is okay, there's a definite lack of variation because some tracks do get repeated quite a lot, but at the same time the music does build up the tension 
and creates a good atmosphere. Plus, you know shit's hit the fan when the combat music's on. Sound effects are average at best. The ambience is quite nice and doesn't tend to distract you. Some of the guns are a bit over the top and the explosion noise is very repetitive. I may have an occasionally glitch resulting in the gun perpetually playing its firing noise which does become very annoying. As for the voice acting, it's good and bad. The voice of a protagonist fits perfectly to him as he's just a pissed off person with zero character with a flamboyant shirt. The villain has a cool over the top accent. The advisor has a smooth and calming voice. So all the main characters have the right voice for the job. But the enemies don't. My eardrums wanted to self-destruct if it meant not being subjugated to all those one-liners the mercs are constantly pulling out of their asses. The mercs speak entirely in curse words and action cliches such as YOUR ASS IS GRASS! Or I'VE GOT YOUR NUMBER BUDDY! Or SCREW YOU BUDDY! And it has ultimately become very annoying. It's why I call everyone buddy now, because that word is permanently seared into my brain. But it also sucks that all the mercs have the same voice. Because that just makes it even more annoying. To sum up the story, I would like to get Jack Carver to quote himself. What is this? A bad spy movie? You two are gonna get us all killed! The story is not very good and it's enormously cliched, but I'm willing to give it a little bit of leeway as it was before creating the rebellious superhuman race became one of the most common plots in the world. The story revolves around Jack Carver. A man who wears fashionable shirts, and also has no character beyond constantly being pissed off. After an extremely trippy opening cutscene, you are thrown onto an island where everyone wants to kill you and a scientist is breeding super mutants who are very good at following orders. And to be honest, it becomes pretty obvious from early on, so to be honest, it isn't even that much of a spoiler. Um, also, speaking of the villain, he isn't really much better than Jack, as he is just a straight up cardboard cut out evil scientist armed with a thick German accent, white hair, and etc. etc. Does not come with monocle though, but may as well have. I do also like though that the story is simple, as it means it's easy to follow, but also you could be followed well. But also in the final chapter of the game, several subplots start popping up, which could have been developed into some really innovative gameplay changes, or just even have a good payoff, but they're either ignored or just resolved too cheaply. But I do grant that the twist in the final level is pretty good, and it did take me by total surprise, which makes the ending that little bit more satisfying. Sadly, this is a department where the game is lacking. There is replay value, but not as much as it could have. But let's cover the good first. There is an open world element to quite a few levels, and there are different routes and tactics which can be adopted to achieve your goal, which does make doing another playthrough worth it in some ways, just to have a little look at what other routes you could have taken. But not enough levels do adopt this strategy, and only one level out of them all was really doing a brilliant job of it. There are a lot of difficulty levels though, and after beating the game on normal, eventually, you won't find yourself being able to resist finding out how you can make an already hard game harder, especially with realistic mode. But there is stuff missing. There are a lot of cool props and easter eggs hidden around the game, but there wasn't really like collectibles which were implemented, and I think collectibles may have been able to have been implemented into the game, 
you know, maybe not a heavy system, but maybe a light system with some sort of little reward, like like data tapes or something. Uh, but also, uh, there could have been maybe some secondary objectives scattered through the game to make the game just that little bit less linear, as it does. Ca- the linearity of a game does kind of spoil the open worldness. Um, as, uh, as far as I know, the multiplayer no longer seems to be running, but I'm not counting it. Um, Far Cry was never really known for its multiplayer either, so we're just not going to talk about it. But there is a map editor, uh, but it is very hard to use. Um, however, this is a game that I would definitely give at least one replay, just to see how good I would be on a higher difficulty level or just for that adrenaline rush that the game creates, which does stave off the boredom. My final thoughts on this game is, is I would have liked to have seen this game attain at least 70 after I marked it, but uh, 65 isn't bad. That's I, I'd, I'd say that's a C, a C plus. Um, but in, in all honesty, Far Cry is so so generic. I mean, really, really damn generic. It's, you know, it's nothing special. It doesn't push for Burt out. But it does do one good thing to stave off the uh, genericness. And that is its amazing difficulty. It gets the adrenaline going. Not enough games do this anymore. Um, I'll give you an example. Battlefield 4. Horrible campaign. Bland and way too easy. I mean, there were hard bits, but they were just frustrating hard, not, you know, get going hard. So that just sucked. And another issue, I do take one more issue of a story, which I didn't point out um, when I was recording and scripting this, but I want to mention it now, it's just popped into my mind. Um, I think the game actually ended too well. Um, I think, you know... The ending, you know, it wrapped everything up too tightly. And, I mean, now look, we've got Far Cry 2, 3 and 4. I mean, I assume they take different protagonists, but I think I would have liked to have seen the return of Jack Carver. Maybe a bit more fleshed out, but it would have been fun. Or even if, um, I don't know, because I haven't played 2, 3 or 4 yet, but I hope to soon. Uh, Maybe they take the same route Assassin's Creed Revelations did. Where we had Altair in the first game, and then Altair returns in um, Revelations. I mean, that that would actually make for a lot of fun. But as far as it goes, it's Far Cry is an above-average game, only just above average. But if you can if you can find yourself a copy, you can get it on Steam. But I don't know if it's fully compatible with 8.1. Um, I would. I would pick it up if you were, if you're into FPSs, especially if you want if you're looking for a challenge. But but in terms of patches, maybe you want to be getting a CD version if you can find it. I got it very cheap, so that was pretty good for me. But yeah, that's my final thoughts on Far Cry. Um, as a 65.5, it is technically the second worst game I've ever reviewed. But no, so let's 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 not think of it like that. It's the third best game I've ever reviewed. Think of it like that. But until next time, people, um, it's a goodbye from me. Oh, one last thing, actually. Shout out. Um, um, as you know, I I have my you know my full let's play of the game. Um, another person has also done a let's play of Far Cry, but 
he did the HD remastered edition on the Xbox 360. So if you want to see what the game looks like with the uh, HD graphics, which are... Uh, I mean, they're okay, but... Oh God, they, they, they messed some bits up so bad. Such as character models. I think they couldn't be asked updating them for some reason. But if you want to see his um, player through, he takes the more stealthy and explorative route than my rather direct spearhead route. Um, please go check him out. His name is Vinyl Light. He also does uh, The Evil Within. Uh, ooh, Manhunt. That's the game. Manhunt. That gory ass fest, which... I don't have a copy of because I don't. I, I'm pretty sure Manhunt became illegal in the UK, but maybe I can find a copy. I mean, I won't mind playing it. I don't know. I have a feeling get it, but, but doing a let's play would get me banned. So credit to you, Vinyl Light, for pushing the boat. But yeah, um, I'll go to the exo exit screen now. So there'll be a link to my let's play to Vinyl Light's let's play and to something else probably my facebook page which i set up a few days ago um if you want to talk to me directly even though i normally respond to as many comments as i can um then yeah or if you just want to know whenever i'm uploading because i tend to be rather spotty with that but until next time goodbye everyone